And with me to make some sense of what we can expect in a few weeks is I-24 News London contributor Jonathan Sacerdotti. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks very Mary. much for being with us. So, as in any election, lay it out for me the main issues in this election at this point just a few weeks before. So the main issues that you heard some of them discussed there in that report are to do with austerity, to do with the quality of living, to do with employment, to do with the National Health Service. And as there are 17 days left until the general election, we have, of course, gone poll crazy. The latest ICM poll for The Guardian newspaper showed David Cameron's Conservative Party ahead at 34 percent. But even that is a five points drop from their position a week ago. ICM's latest poll, though, has Labour down one point on 32, with UKIP up four on 11 percent and the Liberal Democrats up to on 10 percent. But of course, if one poll says one thing, the other has to say the other. And a poll carried out by Populous shows the exact reverse, with Labour unchanged at 34 percent. So it really is neck and neck if we go by these different polls. As we've and learned here, uh, polls really, until the very last minute, can uh, be very misleading. What about the SNP? They released their sort of manifesto today. What role do they have in these elections? The Scottish National Party could emerge as Britain's third largest party in these elections, which is actually extraordinary. In 2010, the party won just six seats, and they've never had more than 11 seats. Yet polls suggest that they may win 50 or more in this election following their popularity after their failed bid for Scottish independence in last year's referendum. And you heard there Nicola Sturgeon saying that she would set the direction of a minority Labour government if they relied on her. She pledged today, as she launched her party's manifesto, that if voters chose her party, she will stand up for Scotland's interests and fight its corner, as well on a national level, uh, making her number one priority, she said, to end austerity, opposing those spending cuts proposed Jonathan. by both Labour and Conservatives. In the very little time we have left, as in any election and as in any good campaign, there were some strange moments. I understand. Indeed, there have been some funny moments. We had a Conservative candidate standing for re-election who dismissed as nonsense the idea that he tried to influence voters by offering them biscuits and muffins. And he's not the first. A UKIP candidate was let off for giving people sausage rolls. So <laughs> there's plenty of crazy stories going on as well here. Jonathan Sashadati, if that's all it took, if only that's all it took to win an election was some biscuits and muffins. Thank you very much for this and you'll keep uh, being with us in the next weeks as we get uh, closer to the election. And now to economy.